Welcome to another typography episode. We are just going to dive in and do some more. There's plenty to be done in here. There's button work. I kind of want to do a light and a dark theme. I get way too ambitious at the beginning, so I want to just attack some stuff. The first one is our little sections, they're all bunched up. They're not grouped very well. And look, we have them like grouped here in our HTML, but they're not, they're just, they're just like, they're visually grouped. It's like they know they're ready. So here, I'm just going to take them. Oh, here, there's so many ways to do this. Div, expand. I'll highlight all these and shift them up and over. Great, okay, so there's one. Oh man, is this is gonna take that long? Uh, probably not, but who wants to watch this? Not you, whatever. If you wanna know the hotkeys, I guess I could say what I'm doing. So I'm using Emmet right here, so I type div tab and I expand it, I hit enter. Uh, and then I just get the lines that I need here in Sublime and I know most text editors have this. It's command control or uh, it's gonna be control, uh, anyway, Windows button and to shift up and down lines. So I'm using the up and down arrows, it's super handy. And then with this selection, you can do tab or uh, command right to expand it into the uh, right. And so that kind of like fixes my indentation. So here, I'll do that here. Um, I wonder if I get, yeah. So since that one is all one tag, I can move it all together without necessarily, see a UL is already grouped, OL, DL, excellent. Buttons, nope, those need uh, a nice separator here. I can also do that, right? Grab things and paste details, that's fine. Figure, fine, block quote, fine. Okay, because those all need a separator. And so that was all just so I could go into index here, go to the body and give this gap a nice, something huge. I don't know, I'm thinking like uh, 10 V port min. Up. Oh. Yeah, okay, well here, let's go 15. Great, okay, so now we have a nice clear separation between the things, because I wanted to know, like I was having trouble visually separating, oh look, what happened here? Oh, because it's in a div now, it's not being stretched. Good, that was kind of annoying it was doing that anyway. This is getting ridiculous. Is this, cons what, what is this here? What is, oh, oh. Did this, it's in the figure, but it didn't load? Reload? What's wrong with this image? Oh, it's not resolving. It has a date on it. Oh, I see, it's not quite dated, but it does have a version. Oops, I'm gonna hit enter. It's like our uh, placeholder service isn't working. Yeah, maybe the service is down. It's blocked. Okay, well, whatever, I'll solve that later. So now I have um, visual like delineation between like the th the spacing in the element that I'm trying to style itself like these like right these don't have any gap between them they're uh, shrink wrapped and that's nice now I can see them in a tight way like that I could also put them in something that you know I know I I could put spacing into like here let's do that let's put them into a section and make it so that sections in our app. Uh, well yeah this is just our little mini app our sections will do something special. See, that one needs it, uh, this one needed it. The paragraph doesn't, except when I'm gonna have multiple paragraphs. As an example, I could, eh, whatever, maybe later. The UL doesn't need it. Okay, so I think that was it. And we can come in here after our body. We'll create this new kind of high level element. Every section will be display grid, which will force it into a vertical sort of stacking rhythm already. And we'll give it a gap of one character. Sure, I always love starting there. Although I wanted to show like a gap between these and you could see the one character was just too small. So let's try three. Ah, okay, maybe a little less too. Great, okay, so now there's still a relationship here between these, but it's like less pronounced. This is interesting. Okay, it is equally, it just kind of like has this visual, it's kind of visually trippy. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we're ready to, do, let's do our light and our dark theme. Because we have this like root brand hue set up. Uh, so we can say at media uh, prefers uh, color scheme. Is it prefers color scheme? Anyway, let's say uh, dark. So we'll customize dark when it's sort of in this other thing. And we're gonna say like our surface uh, color will be it just not like in a dark, it's gonna be super, we'll use our brand hue, so our brand hue, and we want really dark. So in our saturation, we probably wanna, um, we'll keep it at like 20%, something low, but definitely saturated, and then our lightness, super low. This is our surface, this is like our background surface. Uh, let's try 5% at first, though I think we're gonna to creep towards eight, so I'm just gonna drop it there anyway. We're not even using it yet, so let's define text. 
the text color is going to be something similar so i'm just going to steal that work and paste it because we want the lightness to sort of be inverted we want the same hue uh, we're going to want a decent amount or like a light amount of saturation and a light color to rest on top of this let's say 80 so this is going to be our text on an eight percent darkness we can try to like pre-game our accessibility here by making sure like there's a decent spread in values uh, like uh, you know like over 50 percent difference in lightness but it's not a guarantee lightness is not um the same thing as perceptual brightness and contrast so we can't quite crutch on that very hard okay anyway uh let's save and i need to define these for our overall typography already did i do that here's our colors yeah they're pretty much defined so let's go like this we're basically just moving this color up here and this color up here because i would already done the light theme and I can simulate our dark theme over here by changing prefers color scheme to dark. Prefers color scheme dark. And I expected to see some dark colors there and I don't. So we have light and we have dark. I do have my tool running that should, oh, I know we need to change and actually use it. So we poured it over the color, but we haven't actually used it here. So this is gonna be uh, text and this is gonna be surface. Classic, classic, classic. Great, and look, there's a little too much red in there. And if I go no emulation, I prefer dark color scheme. So this is default. If it's light, it's light. Oh, look, light has a bug. So what happened when we ported these colors over? We're using the surface, the surface here. He's saturated. That doesn't look right. Aha. Uh -huh. Surface and text got swapped. Yes, I think that's what happened. That can go back to there. Okay, just some good old fashioned, I'm typing and it's hard. Okay, uh, let's also put some padding in here. Oh, padding block, I already have that much. Let's do the same as our gap. There we go. Give me some space up here. Uh, padding block, oh look, padding is being reset here. Funny. Found an old, you know, doubled up on our some of our styles, okay. Ah, all right, we have some visual harmony here. I get to see these H1s all in that space. We have gaps and I can simulate dark scheme, right? Okay, let's get back to dark. I think that's too red in our surface. So let's drop this to 10% saturation. That's good. I still think it looks a little too much and that's because like if you look in the sky, that would look like kind of smoggy. I'm not sure I want smoggy. I'd rather have like smoky gray. Wow, there's, the red is really showing through for me there. Okay, that's better. 8% seems fine. I could try 10%, go a little lighter. Nah, it's a dark theme. Great. Our text, though, does look like it, it's got lots of contrast. Yeah, let's make it a little more subtle here. Okay, looks like our, our updated color score says we went into the warning zone. Let's see what Vizbug's you know, old school inspect method says. It's all good. Interesting. So here, I'll pin that and then use the inspector here on... Oh, look, it says it's good. Oh, it was at the thinner, oh, the thinner font is not scoring as well. Cool, okay. So while the colors are fine, this algorithm is saying yes, but at this font size with this thinness and that amount of contrast, you are at a level of which, okay. This is great, so let me refresh and I'll just bump this back to 80. And now we're into a green check mark scenario. Right? Okay, I can hang with that, I like it. It knew the difference. So here, this thin font gets negative 113 and this bolder one gets negative 113. Hmm. Hey, and this one just started failing. This has a negative 113 with a failure. This one has negative 113 with a pass. How do I learn more about that? Interesting. I'll have to go inspect that. I look, this font size was good and this one is still struggling. I'll have to check that out. Oh, look at our small and our, our subtext here. Must not be getting uh, or do they have a color set on them explicitly did i already make some more colors i did look this up in here so this is going to be var text two up here 
we can add that with text two. So we'll define it. We'll use the value that we already know is good. And we'll take that and go redefine it in dark theme as well. Since that's where we're seeing the deficiency and that's because our lightness needs flipped. So we can just kind of try flipping it all here. 60, because what do we settle at? It was 80 there. We can drop it 17%. What was this spread before? Was, so it's 8% lighter. Yeah, text two. Okay, so we can do that. Let's do 72. All right, where are those smalls? Right here. Yeah, they look subtly pushed back there. Awesome. Okay, so we're kind of mimicking that. We've got the same amount of saturation. So here we are in text. This got bumped up in saturation. We could probably take that out of it, but I don't really see it, so I don't mind it. Let's leave it in. It's gonna help it blend in with the theme more. Uh, okay, what else did I want to do? Let's go back to, let's test our light theme, make sure it's still working. Let's, we want the rendering panel here and we'll change to light. Still looks good. And you know what we can change in our dark theme is our purple is a little hot and we can desaturate our brand. So we're not gonna desaturate our brand hue, but we do wanna desaturate um, our usage of it. Okay, so we have uses of our brand. Let's look at our brand hue. 50%, 50%, so that's gonna be pretty bright, pretty light. That's a very good like neon color. Is that our only usage of it? No, the anchor here is using the color as well to create something for itself. So we could put the ownership of the marker color here, but I'm sure this brand is gonna be used. We have two different pink brands kind of showing up here. So we have like, I don't I don't know. We should probably unite these. I think I like the lighter purple one here, but maybe we did this one because of contrast for links in light mode. Let's go see. So here's our light theme. Our contrast is fine. It could be better, I guess. What's our contrast on our dot here? It doesn't tell us. We'll have to use that purple somewhere. So let's find our LI. Uh, where are you? We were just looking at your color. Here it is. Okay, so HSL 50%, 50%. That looks like a color I made when I was just kind of stabbing um, in the dark to find a color. I just like to use as, as a base, whereas the link color looked like it was something more deliberate. So let's take this link color here. We'll say var. Um, brand. So we have a brand hue, right? We just don't have a brand. Okay, so this will be brand. Uh, and then we'll make sure we have like a dark theme. So that was what we wanted to do first. If we do this and go replace our usage of that in the link, did we do that when we took it? Um, link, where'd you go? Here you are. We did. We replaced it with brand. Okay, so we're using it. Uh, it's getting redefined here. We want to take out some of that saturation to like 60 pull it back in. Okay, so we should see no changes here. Let's go use, oh, it's, so oh, here's our, our link color. Okay, now we'll switch to dark. We're ready to test that. Okay, dark, uh, I don't see, oh, it would be up here where it would be flipping us to the, the darker theme colors, okay. So we have brand, here's our saturation drop. I could drop it more and try to see because basically in the dark, a bright color will look really bright already. You don't need to bring so much. It's gonna kind of make it jiggle like a neon color. So unless you want neon, um, but in this case, I don't want neon. I want something nice and legible. So I dropped the saturation, which darkened it um, and took away some of the color. I'm gonna drop it again. So look, it looks a little moddy and I'm gonna add some lightness. Yes. So as you add white, you can see that the desaturation kind of has more effect. Um, it's pulling it towards a more contrasting desaturated color, right? We're adding white on dark. And I can already tell that I'm gonna like this light gra grape color. So we have 40, and I can even this out to 40 and 55%. Pop up here to our brand. This is 40 and 55% on our brand color there. And I'll save, uh, and let's use that on our LI. Let's stop making up a color here. Our marker color can now be brand, I mean, that's, pretty much what I think a designer or anybody would expect to have put here anyway. Maybe an alt brand color. Look, we didn't even see the change. Okay, let's check light theme. Uh, oh, rendering's already open right here. Let's go light. Excellent, nice, good colors. It's a little bit more vibrant. We'll go to dark. It becomes a little desaturated. Mm, could drop it even a little bit more or add some white. Let's add some more white. Uh, let's go 60. 
Yeah, okay, I don't know how much you saw that, but that makes me feel better about its contrast. It could be scoring better here. Which, let's just make it do that. We can go to 70. I'm sure it'll still look pinkish. Eh, it has lost a lot of its pinkish. We can go to 60 on the saturation. Okay, so what I did there is I, co I compromised. Um, and I can compromise right inside of HSL. It's so much fun, HSL. I just I feel like I'm just making these nice little bargains over here in a dark theme, um, picking my hues. Just love it. Okay, um, we have some gap between our groups. We made the groups. Um, we have... This could use some stuff. I think all of our focus could use some changes. So here, let's target this. Let's simulate focus. So we'll come over here to this toggle element pseudo states. Let's toggle focus. And now we can design our focus a little bit here. Let's do that generically in terms of this tool. Might go up a little higher. Um, I don't really know where to define this. Hmm, focus like this, I guess. Seems fine for me. It's like all items should have, I, I tend to do focus offset, negative 10 pixels is really common for me to do. Is that, oh look, it's not applying. Focus offset, negative 10, does it not like my, oh, I think it's, uh, focus, focus, uh, oh, outline offset, outline offset. Uh, focus again on here. Oh no. It like moved it out of. Ah, uh, here we go. I did want a positive number. Look, okay, I wanted 10 pixels after all. I wonder if I even want like half a character. Because that's almost 10 pixels if it's a 16 pixel font. But maybe I want 0.75. This is kind of fun. Maybe I want a whole character of an offset. That sounds really nice from like a legibility point of view point of view like look as you're reading here oh the link link it's a little overly here let's go back to 0.75 link was a good example of what do we want hmm that's even I really like how it fits here though that's nice that's fine I mean as for a screen reader this is actually really nice for me this creates good focus okay I'll keep it outline color var brand there we go, we get to use it again immediately. There it is. And I think if we set the width, we'll get rid of kind of this um, chrome double double border here, but that's, that's really nice. It's adding to the contrast. I get to be part of it with my brand and I also get to have a really nice high contrast. Someone using this isn't necessarily looking to enhance my design. They're looking to focus and find something visually or through a keyboard. And this is just a way we're gonna want to help. Okay, we got those. Uh, our links look good. There's our button with the outline. Okay, that's even kind of nice by default. I don't really care that those are overlapping. I just love that they're nice and readable. Okay, uh, let's go from there. Can I style the marker on this? I think so, yes, yeah, summary marker. Did we miss that here on our marker styles? Yeah, we should just style all the markers here with the focus. That makes sense to me. It's this global style. And look at that, we got a pink arrow on our summary. I think that's new. I'm in, am I in Canary? Yeah, I'm in Canary. Here's my little lab icon. Um, interesting, okay. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I mean, that's really convenient. Okay, cool, that was super easy. I think there's some, let's get rid of focus uh, simulation here. Can twirl that back up. I don't like how tight the read more is with its content. So let's fix that. That's the summary element needs some separation from the parent. So do we have details in here? No, so I put it in and we're pretty much still just styling the raw stuff. Okay, well, let's move on to that then. I don't know if that's where we were. We did, oh, we did definition list. Oh, we're skipping button and link and going into, that's okay. Let's, let's knock this one out really quick. So this is details, cool element. We know we're gonna have like a summary child um, so we can just kind of make our nested selector there like that automatically. Does our details need anything at the parent level here? I don't think so. It's kind of inheriting everything it needs to so far. Our typography already looks in line with our paragraphs. Although our paragraphs, no, our paragraphs look better than our, oh no, this is a par it's a paragraph element. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, all I'm styling right now is this summary and the immediate contents that come inside of it. Hmm. 
So maybe this is margin bottom. No, because I only want it when it's open to have that. That would no details open summary margin. Mm, I don't like it. You see what I mean? Like I want there to be some space here, but I don't want it to shift based on the state of this, although it's already kind of shifting height. I just, let's just try some margin bottom on this and just see if that even um, gives us the desired result here. It does, okay. And then as I, oh yeah, that's nice. I could put it on the first child. So here, details and star first child margin block start. Oh, that's funny. Uh, one rim. I should probably make some spacing units in this eventually as well. Okay, so now the margin isn't on this it's details element. Oh, look, it's already got some. Did I just do that? Details first. Child. Oh, it's oh first child. Here we go. Not summary. Okay. But look, now we're not even selecting anything. Oh, because it's not a first child. We need to do not summary before the first child. So we need to filter the list. Everything that's not a summary that's the first of type, maybe? There's our margin back. Let's try first child. Does that still work or does it need to be first of type? It does need to be first of type. Okay, so this is kind of a cool, tricky little selector uh, that I wrote down here. We're saying details. Um, and every direct child of it of any kind as long as it's not a summary. So we're pre-filtering it. So if you think about like how this list is getting smaller and smaller, this has, we're, we're shrinking it without the summary beforehand. We get to the first of type. And now we're making sure that whatever it is that we have inside of there, um, it's not the first child because first child would still be referencing the summary even after we've kind of um, done this pre-filtering. Maybe First of type, no, no, okay, we do need first of type with that because we're eliminating it and now we're being less specific about which kind of, or yeah, we're being a little more generic about it. So instead of saying first child, which does reference an index, this is first of type based on the previous query that's come back. Um, and cool, that gives us this effect right here. So it means any, any content that goes inside of a details is gonna push off the top just a little bit. Um, which is nice because now we're always going to have some healthy space here between our uh, details and the stuff that it's representing. Very cool. I kind of want to change the styles of a summary. Like, right? Um, there, the font size is kind of small. Is it at one rem? Why does it look so tiny? What is this at? What's our paragraph at again? Our paragraph is at, hey, uh, 1.25 rem. Okay, so let's do 1.3. Should it be bigger like that? I kind of think so, right? Oh no, it should just be the same size. So can we do font size inherit? Why would that be inheriting it from the paragraph though? It seems like this needs to just get shared with it. So where's the paragraph getting its font size? right here and look we've got others that are just opting in for this the summary though doesn't need to do the the inline size maximum though hmm i mean if it was a really long summary well let's try it what happens with a really long summary la 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 well more La 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 la. Okay. Yep. Now I think that's going to need a maximum. So let's just save that and see if that fixes our issue. It does. But look at this weird. Hmm. Paragraphs are going to be stuck inside of there too. Its font size got set to 1.25 rem, but it doesn't look like it, does it? Did I reset it down here? Oh yeah, I did. Let's do this. Oops. There we go. Hmm. Hmm. I think we need to do something more drastic here. Like I think a details element feels a lot like a well that you're expanding. Like this is this is like a header that's opening up and it doesn't look like this stuff is attached to that very well other than its proximity. Okay, let's refresh. 
I mean, this example seems fine, but I don't think it's super realistic. Um, and here, let's style it. So here we'll say background color. And we're going to need to come up with a new kind of surface, I think. So let's just make one up. It's going to be var, uh, brand hue. Oh, what? let's not make it up up there. Let's do it here. So we've got surface, surface two. Maybe I should call it surface one. Anyway, let's just do this at like 90%. It's probably something like that. And in our dark theme, well, here, surface. Mm, or it's, uh, oh, look, our image finally downloaded. <laughs> That's funny. Their servers must have just come back or something. Okay, server, uh, surface two, 20%. I'm just trying to like looking at, oh, nope. I'm trying to look at this one and do the same thing I did before. And we'll use the surface two color down here. Um, yeah, right here, right here. Okay, we should see that. Ooh, that is very purple. All right, let's take almost, oh look, the saturation is out of control, 3%. We can go, no, let's keep it three, and this can be 12%. When you're in dark themes, you can really see a change in dark colors really well. That's too much, so try that. Cool. Um, I'd see issues with the, how it's contained, so we'll fix that in a second. I'm just kind of looking at the color. Color looks good. Let's check our light theme. Uh, rendering and our light theme here's light it could use a little more how about 87 percent and this one's definitely too pink I'm dropping the yeah how about 15 it can be a little warmer than that no oh, that's too warm the subtle differences here okay now I'm I'm just visually confused so I'll leave it um, all right I want to essentially only have that background color over top of this content. So I want the summary to pop out of it somehow or not be, hmm, like the first idea is here and I'll use logical properties in a second is to just sort of negative take this out. Yeah, something like that. But see, I can't hard code this. Um, and that makes this really awkward to lay out because now it's in this negative space. Um, hmm. I could pad the top the same that I'm margin topping. So padding top the 50 pixels. And now I'm sort of consuming the same space as the, oh look, that even, it's funny how that matched up. Um, and, and look, I removed the effect. Okay, so let's refresh. If I expand, I could make the summary have a background of white, but we can see that that illusion would fall. Oh, our details needs to be display inline Block. Oh, I thought it, look, it's width is, t is more than its children. Um, and it's being, I, is it the parent here? It's the parent that's doing this. So let's do display flex. Okay. Flex direction column. Then we have align items. Oh, we have align content, just align items. Oh man, line, here we go. It's trying to get us back to, and what does it do to our inline block item? It looks like our inline block item is now shrink wrapped. Okay, so we had this details element is being stretched by its parent container into the width of the content. And look, we could see that it was doing it to all the others as well, because now they're actually centered since they um, don't have width being set by the parent layout. So I could put them in a div to prevent this, but I also don't want a centered layout, so I could do, ah, there's ways for flex to do this, but I just wanted to test that the width of this wasn't being um, kind of coming from a details like selector, this is coming from the layout it's in. And I don't know how I want to solve this. I mean, I don't like this padding here. It's, it's really not nice, so I, do I have to pad this too after I change the background color? I feel like I'm just working my way into a bunch of issues here. Oops, one rim. Oh, I might be able to fix this with a gradient. Okay, that's not bad. Um, I, I don't like the result of, oh, here, let's do border radius. It seems like it needs that border radius, one character. So when it's collapsed, okay. Now it's self-contained. Summary could get a border on the 
bottom. Well, then it would have it even after expanding. Could put a border on it when it's open only because it just looks. I want to make the association here more obvious. What do you all think? I mean, that is fine to me in one way. Let's go to this parent grid. Can we change this with just a couple property changes? Justify, so place content, no. Align items, justify content. Uh, justify is... Hmm. <laughs> it's getting stretched. I don't like it. Let's go back to the basic details and just kind of uh, stick it to how it was there. So we had like padding, one rem, border radius, uh, one character, right? And that sort of got us into this scenario. This is fine for now. I'm just not stoked on it. I don't like our text on here. It looks lazy. It's not fit. That's our parent layout's fault though, but this is kind of annoying. Oh, can I say max inline? No, because it's the parent layout doing that. It's like max inline size is max content. Oh, look at that. That does actually force it. So that's the child saying, no, 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 I don't care parent layout. I really, really want to be this. Even though display inline block didn't do the same thing. It's not as explicit enough about its width, which I think I want on this actually. It's probably what I want on all of these container oriented elements. Let's just put that on the OL where is that? What does that get us? It feels like it should be what we want. I can see some grouping issues happening. Okay, maximum size and details. Ooh, I don't want that to be display grid. Hmm. Well, let's just try it for now on here and see. Oh, well. Hmm. Is it really doing much? Let's take it off. Ah, it is. Excellent. Okay. Cause this is what I this is the size that my my brain imagines the OL being. And by setting it to that, it is. It's allowing it to never stretch. So even in a scenario where the layout can conveniently do something, our component is going to be very explicit that it doesn't want to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I'm also gonna put it on our details. Boop. I wonder if there's other places where we're gonna want that. Our section, maybe? I don't know, we'll see. Okay, I'll pull this open a little bit. Why is this look off center? Oh, ooh, did you? Free, huh? That's kind of cool, but that was unexpected. Interesting. I'm going to leave it. When it's collapsed, it's interesting. It's still a display block. It's just width isn't block. So it's still consuming. It's still going to participate in the flow as a block. It's just going to represent itself as its maximum content. Very cool. I like it, just discovering stuff as I go. I think we're way over time. And so I'm gonna pause this video and for another one, I'll come back and do some more random typography uh, color work in the DOM. Woohoo! see y'all later, bye. <laughs>